Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Playwright tutorial, I'm going to cover the concepts of fixtures and context, browser context within Playwright, which will be very helpful and required for future understanding and future concepts that I'm going to cover in the next section of the videos. So what exactly is fixture within Playwright? Now, if you see the documentation, official documentation of Playwright, Playwright tests is based on the concept of test fixture, right? So now within Playwright, you have test fixture and test fixture are nothing but they are used to establish the environment for each test giving test everything it needs and nothing else right so what exactly in a broader sense the fixture mean in any programming so fixture will is kind of a prep that happens before you start running your test right so you say for example you want to set up something in the browser you want to set up the cookies right or you want to open a browser in a particular state a page in a particular state in general programming you want to say for example set up the database or some server component something related something that is required or prerequisite before you can start testing right so that's something which fixture or test fixture will do in general within programming and similar concept is there within playwright right now playwright has some built-in fixtures and we have already been using fixture right so if you see we have been using this test expect right so you have already used test fixture in your first test right so this test and fixture is the fixture from the playwright then we have this page right so the page argument that we have been passing into the into the test is to set up a page fixture right so there is a built-in fixture that is available within playwright so you'll see that these are some of the built-in fixture page fixture context browser right browser name and request these are the five built-in fixtures that are available and obviously there could be possibility that in future they introduce some more but as of now these are the fixtures that are available so these fixture when we said you know page so when you pass page in here it will basically this will provide all the information or all the basic information or the setup information that is required for the browser page setup right so this is basically the built-in fixture and how it is going to help so basically in the test if i say page it will go ahead and set up the page and whatever is required to configure the page of a particular browser playwright will do it internally because it is having the fixture and everything will happen in the background okay now let me go ahead and show you all of these details so basically the context the browser everything how the browser context or the page fixture basically will Will help you in doing the browser setup and context setup in specific scenarios within your test right so here I have created a new file file uh, fixture context.spec.js and created new test there and now till now we have been creating a page fixture right so we have been passing this page argument and then this will create a page fixture which will instantiate a browser page which will be in an incognito mode that is basically independent for each of the tests that is basically being executed right so that context if we go ahead and see the documentation so isolated page for this test right so any specific test that you are running it will create an isolated context for a particular test run so now if we instead of page we pass the browser context right so i'll show you how with the browser fixture it will do the same thing that the page fixture will do automatically in the background right so we have passed the browser fixture or the browser argument which will create a browser fixture right so now on the browser fixture what we can do is we can simply say we can call browser dot new context right so what this new context method will do if you just hover over it will create a new browser context it won't share cookies cache with other browser context right now where exactly this new context thing is helpful if you are from the selenium background or any automation tool background browser contexts are helpful say for example you want to configure few prerequisite before you want to execute your test cases for example authentication for example you want to set up certain cookies you want to do some proxy settings and then launch the browser page that's where you go ahead and configure the context right so when we say browser dot new context method we can then pass the options whatever options whatever arguments are supported in this new context right so that we can pass so as of now let i won't pass anything in there and i can 
basically store so you'll see that it is a promise right so it returns promise and i can go ahead and store it in a variable right so if you go to the browser dot new context documentation i'll go to the details here oh yeah it's here now it creates a new browser context it won't share cookies cache right and that's basically the usage and if we say browser dot new context we can then store it into a variable context right so create a new incognito browser context that was the browser dot new context does all right so we can go ahead and then simply say const context okay because this is creating a new context right now we are creating a new con context and this is an async method so we have to make sure that we use await right that's how the documentation is all about right so it will clearly help you to understand or if you get stuck somewhere the documentation will guide you basically what exactly you have to go ahead and do and understand the details so it will create a new incognito browser context which you have stored in a variable context now using that context we can create a new page in a pristine context right so this is the new context and then using this context i can create a new page how by context dot new page method all right so then i can say context dot you will see new page method is available there right so if i simply don't pass anything in the new page as an argument if you just hover over in the uh, on the new page as well you can create uh, a new page with the browser context right and then i can also store this into a variable page right and we have to use await there so now the new page has been created and now on this page i can go ahead and do or use all the methods right so i can say page dot go to and then open the website right or the test url whichever we are trying to test right so i can say training dot rcv academy dot com all right so that's the page and now we have to make sure that we are using await because this is an action all right so if we save this now you'll see that we have added two additional lines in there right which we were by default be able to do using the page fixture right we were using page fixture there and if you have to open the page or the any of the url we didn't have to do new context and new page and then use page dot go to right so if we simply pass the page fixture these two steps were done automatically for us as right so that's where the page fixture was helpful why we are using this browser context and browser fixture i'll show you in a moment but let me keep it as is and let's execute this test and i'll show you that it actually does the same thing it will open the same uh the url in the same fashion as we were using the page fixture so it has opened the browser and you will see the training website has been opened successfully right so this is basically what is happening when you are using the browser context right okay so this was a little slow test so that's why and i haven't used the close so i'll close it manually so now let me close this and what i'll do is i'll explain the details of this here okay so let me do a copy and paste so i'll create another test now without the browser fixture when we are using the page fixture right we were passing the page argument in there and then we were not using any of this okay we were not using any of this so here let me change it to google.com here and then same url there okay so if we just say this test all right so let me execute test dot only and if you say test dot only only this particular test will be executed all right okay so duplicate test title let me rename it page fixture and save it so the test title shouldn't be same for multiple tests right and if we execute this you will see absolutely similar action that happened in the previous test so it will open the browser and then open google.com okay so that's basically how it has happened if i say just this test you will see same thing will happen in this case as well where we used the browser fixture right so if i run this and you'll see this has passed as well let me close this you'll see two of the windows now open right so the first one was for the previous test and this is for the another test right so this is basically on a conceptual level i'm trying to explain that when you are using the page argument it creates a page fixture and page fixture internally takes care of creating a new context for the browser and then create a new page using that context right but now where exactly so if you say new context and new page 
so when you use page fixture if you do not have any specific requirement of the authentication of the cookies of any of the proxy settings for your application to open you do not want to preset any of those details that are prerequisite for your test to start right then in that case you just want your browser to open in incognito mode and start your test if that's the case page fixture is absolutely fine for you okay but in case you have a requirement requirement wherein and most of the enterprise application you will have that sort of requirement you will need the proxy setting to be set up first you want to start a browser in a particular state before you can go ahead and start testing your application right so in that particular case you will need to create a new context and let me explain you what all arguments you can pass in the new context when we say new context you will see that these are the arguments right so whether you want to accept downloads what will be the base url right so this is very important detail right so for example i want to set up the base url right so i can basically pass the detail in there base url colon and then i can say say i have provided the base url as google.com right now when i am trying to launch or go to a particular page for example i want to say google.com and then say i want to search something right so if i say forward slash search right or forward slash web hp so it will do something or say for example let me search something okay or it has uh, i'll say search query test okay let me pass this so that's the base url now i can simply say because i have so i have set up the base url i can simply go ahead and say go to search and then search for this particular keyword right so this is basically whenever the new context will be created for the browser this will be set up already into the new context all right so let me save this and execute this particular test can you see it? automatically because we have set up the base url and then we have said go to search and then search for this test right so it automatically went ahead and search so now because if you are in your application you have the base url that is consistent and you have certain separate urls that you want to navigate then you can go ahead and set up the base url in, into the browser context and a lot of other details right it's not just about base url but if you go ahead and and see the details so base url is one of the thing then we have a bypass csp right content security policy client certificates if you want to add you can go ahead and this has been added in 1.46 right so client certificate you can specify those details another very important detail is the headers http headers right a lot of other things color scheme you want to have light or dark light right so if i want to set up the color scheme as well in the browser context before opening the browser i can straight away go in there and comma separated i can say okay color color scheme okay colon and light or dark right so let me say i want to open and this is string right so if you just hover over it will show you what sort of property you color scheme is light dark so we can simply say dark so we have to okay so you can see that i have set up the color scheme there as dark right so now when the browser will be created or context will be created the color scheme for the browser will be dark similarly geolocation http credential if you want to specify okay then any http error https errors if you're getting right if you want to ignore by default it is false if you want to ignore those use this argument and set it as true right if you want to javascript to be enabled you enable or you disable it to false right by default you will see that it defaults to true but you can disable javascript okay locale you can set up logger offline lot of other details right so proxy is very common one that you might need need in your enterprise level application okay similarly you have the option for record video and then the screen so you can specify the screen size or the viewport in which the browser will launch okay so these are some of the common things that you might need to set up in a new context or the new browser context that you are trying to launch and that's where the browser fixture is helpful right so when you use the page fixture you know that by default it will create a new context but that new context will be just an in incognito browser mode the default browser incognito mode but if you are using a new context with certain predefined details that are required for your test you use the browser fixture and then 
in the new context you define whatever is required and then go ahead and use that particular page new page with the context that you have created all right and the important thing here is basically if on your desktop browser if say for example i open a new tab right you will see always it remembers the plugins that are installed for example all the plugins that are installed anything that i have bookmarked favorites everything right if you open it incognito it doesn't remember the detail right for example if i open the the private window right so no details are being remembered in the incognito mode nothing will be stored on the, the the browsing history also won't be stored so similarly if you want to open the browser in a particular state or particular context then we have to go ahead and set up the new context and then launch the browser okay so now let's go ahead and quickly run this test again and see that dark theme has been applied to the browser okay so the color scheme i think think I know the reason here so we have selected the color scheme as dark right and for Google we don't have the dark color theme let's go to the playwright I have just uh, did a bit of research there about the preferred color scheme as well and if you see if a website supports the color scheme so if you see the playwright website switch between dark and light mode right so currently dark mode is selected if we switch uh, to the dark mode right so this is the basically the dark mode and then this is the light mode right so if we go ahead and instead of google let me use playwright okay and let me just go to the playwright homepage. okay so now if i go ahead and execute this and here the color scheme we have chosen is the dark right so in the new context we are saying open the base url okay and then just go to the home page right so we have just specify a forward slash basically just the home page playwright.dev and open it into the dark mode all right so that that is the context that will be set up for the browser and when the new page will be open it will be open with that particular context okay so if i go ahead and execute this now it should execute perfectly fine and instead of the light theme that that we were seeing in google we should be able to see dark theme here because playwright website supports it okay okay so i think it yeah so here you'll see that it has opened it so let me close it again close all of these again and re-execute so you can see it has opened into the dark mode now okay so now if i close this and let's switch it to the light all right so i'll say light color scheme and run this and here you'll see that it has opened into the light theme all right so this is basically the detail about the fixture basic details i'll cover more details in much more advanced when we move further into the tutorial series but as of now to grasp future concepts this is very important to understand why we were using page fixture and what internally page fixture does when we use the browser fixture and we create a new context how it will be helpful in your automation you can set up the base url and all n number of arguments or presets that might be required for your test cases and then you can use that page context that context to create a new page and use it in your future test cases so proper baseline that is required for your test to execute is already created as part of the new context but if you do not have any specific requirement into the new context you can straight away use a page fixture which will create an incognito mode uh, browser context and then will create a page by default so these two steps will take will be taken care if you do not have any specific requirement into the new context okay so i hope this was uh, clear please comment into the comment section i know this is a little tricky uh, topic but please comment if anything is not clear and i'll to i'll try to clarify any of the doubts that you have in the comment section so that's all for this video thank you see you in the next one